Brazil, the host of Copa America, kicked things off with a relatively comfortable 3-0 win over Venezuela and since, they have beaten Peru 4-0 and Colombia 2-1, putting Brazil top of the group winning all three games so far. Brazil have displayed some interesting structures and principles picking up great form, which we will attempt to understand and explain in this tactical analysis. Also in this video, we are going to try and replicate that tactic in Football Manager and also look at the results that I got using it with Brazil and just a handful of games with Manchester United. So if you are new or you haven't yet and you are enjoying this type of content, make sure you are subscribed, make sure you like this video as well, you can share it and also leave a comment with any tactical recommendations but for now let's get started Chichi deploys a lopsided 4-4-2 diamond of sorts. Danilo and Renan Lodi have been the main starting fullbacks, with Casemiro holding in front of the two central defenders. Fred has played an interesting role on the left side of central midfield, while Lucas Paqueta has been roaming around on the right side. Gabriel Jesus has taken up a position out wide on the right flank, with Neymar partnering Richarlison up top. This is how they lined up in their opening game against Venezuela, with Chi Chi then making some personal changes in the other two games, but with the structure and principle remaining the same. So now we're going to move on on how Brazil worked the ball. The biggest advantage that the Brazilians have in their attack is their speed. Relying on creativity and technical abilities is certainly their main trait, but executing everything with pace and using their strength to outplay the opposition is something that they focus on. The team play possession-based football and like to circulate the ball at the back, but their advanced position also allows them to quickly progress into the final third should they see a good opportunity to attack. Brazil tend to use width and depth to penetrate. Chi Chi has sent his side out to try and maximise width and offensive depth to try and get past teams who use a deep block against them, which has been every team so far in Copa America. The right back would usually come inside to form a back three with the centre backs, with Fred and Casemiro as a midfield pivot ahead of them. On the left, the full back would push up extremely high to provide width, whilst the right winger would do the same on the opposite flank. Neymar and the attacking midfielder will attempt to operate in the half spaces on either side of the striker who is rarely involved in the build up phase. Fred's role is very interesting, the Manchester United man will go wide when Brazil have the ball operating as a defensive left back with the actual left back staying higher up the pitch. Fred would rarely attempt to get further forward, this is largely to protect Brazil during the transition while it also gives Brazil an easy way to progress up the pitch creating a numerical and positional overload in midfield. This image shows the sort of positions that Neymar and Piquetta constantly took up between the Venezuelan lines and in the half spaces, with Jesus and Richarlison making runs in behind and forcing the defence line to drop, which in turn creates more space for the two Brazilian playmakers to receive possession. This approach also helps Brazil to counter-press effectively, as they have a high number of players close to each other who could immediately put pressure on the ball if the ball is lost. And if the counter-press fails, Brazil immediately falls back into a compact 4-4-2 shape, with Neymar and Richarlison left up field to provide a counter-attacking threat. And that's how they mainly operate with the ball, but now we're going to talk about why the left side is their main strength. The majority of Brazil's attack and play happens down the left flank, with the left back, Neymar and Fred often combining before attempting to find the striker in the penalty area. These action maps taken from the excellent post-match report produced by Santif over on Total Football Analysis shows Brazil's tendency to attack down the left flank, with the majority of crosses, dribbles and passes into the penalty area coming from that side of the pitch against Venezuela. The striker's willingness to run in behind the defence line plays a big part in his tactic as it allows Neymar to come deep and get on the ball, while also providing a target for the left back and occasionally Fred to try and find him with crosses from deeper areas. Here, Neymar comes short to receive Casemiro's pass, dragging one of the Venezuelan defenders out with him and immediately Richarlison makes a run into the vacated space. Neymar is able to receive, turn and then fire a pass through to the Everton man, who is able to run in behind, with the Venezuelan defence having conceded space due to Neymar's movement in deeper areas. And it's a totally different story on the opposite flank, where Jesus stays high and wide, in contrast to Neymar. 
This is essentially the story of Brazil's attack and play. They've attempted most of their attacks down the left, the left back and Fred combining to try and release the striker, while they went a little more direct down the right side, utilising the winger's pace by asking them to stay high and wide. But that's how they utilise the left side, now we're going to talk about how they transition into defence. When it comes to defensive transitions, it is impressive that they don't often get exposed considering their advanced positioning. This is partly possible due to the right back's successful split of responsibilities and while he contributes to the ball progression, he does stay closer to the back line compared to the left back. With the contribution of the midfield players who do involve in providing additional defensive support combined with their pressing, they manage to keep the opposite team away from the goal. The team's defensive awareness is shown in the image. After the fullback was dragged out wide, one of the midfielders immediately covered depth and didn't allow the opposition to have a numerical advantage on the flank while filling in the gap. Their high line is the starting point of their build-up but would also help in executing their pressing strategy out of possession. The team have been extremely focused on their high pressing intensity and recovering the ball in the advanced areas to expose the opposition. The high press has been successful, especially against teams who tend to give away their initiative and allow being pinned back. Brazil wouldn't be involved in pressing that high against more attacking teams but would still focus on gaining back possession as soon as possible and keeping the opposition away from the defensive third. Their man-to-man -man marking is also illustrated here. They made sure to cover each of the ball near players and aim to recover the ball immediately after the throw-in. Chi Chi has been very particular in his instructions for the team when they are out of possession. He wants them to keep fighting for the ball. They constantly press the opposition in efforts to win the ball back. That is shown in their average PPDA rate of 7-0.6. They try to limit the opposition's space for movement and pressurise them enough to force them into errors. They recover the ball 77.25 times per game on average, which helps them in keeping the goal safe, but also having more time on the ball and attack. And that's how they transition into defence and for the conclusion, considering their lineup and successful performance in 2020, Brazil are one of the favourites for the Copa America triumph. They need to defend their 2019 title and if they stay consistent and stick to what they do best, be creative in attack and concentrated in defence, they have a high chance to outplay their opponents. But that there wraps up this tactical analysis, we are now going to go into Football Manager to look at the tactic, have a look at the results used with Brazil and Manchester United, so let's head over. So before we actually look at the tactic and results with Brazil, we're just going to have a quick skim through the results used with Manchester United. So as you can see in the Premier League, Manchester United after 8 games have played 8, won 6, drawn 2 and lost none with a goal difference of plus 22. In the UEFA Champions League, we have played 3 and won 3, drawing none, losing none with a goal difference of plus 8 and points tally of 9. And in the Carabao Cup, we have been knocked out already in the 4th round by Liverpool. So if we go through the schedules, you can see that we started off with a 3-1 victory over Chelsea, Greenwood, Bailly and Daniel James getting the goals. You can see that we actually won in extra time. We then got a 1-1 draw away to Everton before smashing West Brom 7-1 at home, Harry Maguire scoring two and Martial grabbing a hat-trick. We then beat Brighton 5-0 after we got knocked out by Liverpool. We went away to Arsenal and getting a 0-0 draw there. We played RB Leipzig away in the Champions League winning 3-1. Then went to Southampton beating them 3-0. In the Champions League again we beat Real Madrid 1-0 at home before smashing Newcastle 6-1 at Old Trafford. We then beat Lokomotiv 5-0 away from home and then beat West Ham 2-1 away and that is where I left this little mini test as well. So in the squad you can see the top goal scorer is Anthony Martial who plays on the left side of the attack so basically the Neymar role. Marcus Rashford is being deployed as the main goal scorer he scored 11 so far. Eric Bailly and Maguire, our two centre-backs, have scored three goals, with Mason Greenwood, who's played some games on the right as the out-and-out -out winger, he's scored two, and Daniel James as well, played on the right as the out-and-out -out winger, has also scored two. For the assist, you can see that Martial has five as the Neymar role with an average rating of 7.71, so that's very interesting to look at when we do, when we do eventually look at the Brazil tactic. Paul Pogba has five assists, Bruno Fernandes also has five assists, and so does Alex Tellez. 
Also, in the Premier League, we have scored 27 goals. We have had the most shots for. Not the fewest shots against, though. Liverpool and Manchester City have been very good defensively. For the best pass completion, we are third with 89%. Manchester United are ranked seventh with average possession. For the most tackles won, we are eighth. For the clean sheets, we are joint fourth with three. And for the fewest conceded, we come in second with five. But that there wraps up the Manchester United results. We are now going to load up the Brazil save to look at the tactics and the Brazil results in the Copa America. So here we have RDF's Brazil 2021 tactic. I'm not really sure what formation to call it. You can say it's a 4-3-1-2 with four defenders here, three midfielders, the one and the two, or a 4-3-3. Again, four defenders, three midfielders, and three attackers. Of course, it all depends on which way you interpret this, because when you look at the Brazil formation on websites like Who Scored, or even on any footballing apps, you would also see Brazil's shape looking a little bit like this. And they would often have Lucas Piquetta or the attacking midfielders on this side with Gabriel Jesus on the right side of midfield and Fred on the left side. But as the tactic plays on and it is on practice on the pitch, it would or should look a little bit more just like this. So what we are going to do is go through the team instructions, the player roles and instructions before looking at the Copa America results. So for the team instructions, we are using the positive mentality. So we are going to be wary of the opponent's counter-attacking threat, but it aims to move the ball around and look for space in the final third. And although the fullbacks may look to overload and the midfielders may look to break ahead of the forwards, and they will generally only do so during relatively risk-free situations. So, of course, that is how the mentality is trying to build the tactic and then we are going to use player roles to try and tweak that because we don't want the right fullback to be overlapping the midfield and we don't want all of the midfielders to be overlapping the strikers. So, we are going to be tweaking that with the team instructions and the attacking width is set to fairly narrow. And finally, we are not using fairly wide or in the middle 50%. This time we are using fairly narrow so we are generally trying to channel our play through the central areas. Not exclusively but that is what we are going to be generally trying to do. For the approach play we are going to be playing out from the defence and if you want to attack down the left hand side even more then you can do focus play down the left. The reason why I'm not using that instruction is because I didn't really find an issue with the attack down the left. For me, Neymar was still heavily involved in the play and also the left wing back so I didn't feel that I needed to use that instruction to focus down the play on the left. For the passing directness, we are using shorter passing so we are going to try and retain the possession just a little whilst using a higher tempo and knocking the ball about, also trying to get the ball into the final third when the opportunity is there. For the dribbling, we are going to be running at the defence, kind of a direct instruction but with the plays and considering dribbling is a strength for Brazil, I felt that it was only right to use that instruction. With the transition when the possession has been lost, we are going to counter press and when the possession has been won, we don't have any instruction. Now in real life, Brazil do try and exploit any gaps created after winning the ball back but instead of everybody doing that, we are going to try and use the player roles to do that instead. So in theory, after we have won the ball, we do want the winger who's got get further forward to get further forward, of course, and get in behind. So to the advance forward, as that is what kind of happens in real life. Now with the Czech Batista, I don't want him to exactly counter and get further forward as soon as possible. I still want him to drop deeper and collect the ball. Same as the ball winning midfielder, I don't want him to instantly get further forward because he actually has a job to do on the left side side and that is to cover the complete wing back so he's got to stay wider and hold his which is what we want him to do rather than counter as soon as possession has been won and when the goalkeeper is in possession he is going to distribute it to the center backs by taking short kicks out of possession with the defensive shape we are using the offside trap higher line of engagement higher defense line and with a narrow defensive width for the marking and tackling, we are using tighter marking because Brazil like to adopt a tight marking system and the present intensity is set to more urgent with prevent short goalkeeper distribution. So that there is the team instructions wrapped up. We are now going to go to the player roles and instructions. In goal, we do have a sweeper keeper on the supportive duty. In central defence, on the left side, we do have a central defender. And on the right side, we do have a ball playing defender who is going to be passing it shorter. He is going to be looking to circulate possession, but he also has the eye to take more risk and play that more direct defence splitting ball, especially to the right winger. On the right side of defence, we do have a fullback on support, 
but when he is in possession we do want him to cut inside with the ball and when Brazil are in possession we do want him to sit narrower a lot more closer to the two centre backs to try and form a back three and on the left side of the defence we do have a complete wing back on the supported duty who is going to be getting further forward roaming from his position just like a complete wing back should and also when he is crossing I do want him to cross from the byline. In defensive midfield we do have a half back who is going to be passing it shorter, closing down more, tackling harder and marking tighter. Kind of a defensive midfield destroyer but also when we are in possession I do want him to stay around this zone here or even drop into the back line as well because I want him to encourage the complete wing back to get further forward a lot. In central midfield we do have a ball winning midfielder on the left side trying to get that Fred roll. He's going to be a ball winning midfielder but he's going to be passing it shorter to retain the possession. Also hold his position so he's not roaming or getting further forward and he is going to be staying wide or trying to stay wide in this channel here. So when Brazil do push up of course the defence line is going to be pushing up. I don't want the ball winning midfielder also to be pressing up as well. I just want him to stay around this position here in this area in central midfield but slightly to the left hand side covering the complete wing back and on the right side of central midfield we do have a roman playmaker now my issue with the roman playmaker is that he doesn't really operate in the half space as often as you want him to do in this brazil tactic now now we can use a mazala on the right side of midfield and the reason why i didn't use a mazala is because he likes to move into the channels which is something that I don't really want him to do. I want him to be collecting the ball a lot more because again, he is a playmaker and he is going to operate in between the lines rather than getting ahead of the lines. So that's the reason why I didn't use a Mazala and I opted for a Roman playmaker. And the annoying thing about a Roman playmaker, you cannot encourage him to stay wider. On the right side of the attack, or on the right wing we do have a winger on the support duty he's also going to cross from the byline and get further forward naturally he's going to dribble more run wide with the ball cross more often and stay wider lastly up top for the Neymar role we are using a Trequartista who is going to be staying wider and I'm trying to encourage him to stay wider in that left half space because in theory the Trequartista is supposed to operate in the left half space and the Roman playmaker is supposed to operate in the right half space that is what's supposed to happen tactically in theory but of course we are going to have some issues with the Roman playmaker but lastly up front the main goal scorer is going to be the advanced forward someone that's not going to be too involved in the build up play and naturally he's going to get further forward in behind the defence and also move into the channels. So that there is the Brazil team instructions and the player roles and instructions. Of course if you are wondering why I am using the shape I am going to pop up an average position of how Brazil did shape up against Venezuela. But now we are going to check the results in the Copa America. So in the group stages, as you can see, Brazil topped that group winning all five games with a goal difference of plus 16 and points tally on 15. First off, we beat Ecuador 3-1, then we beat Australia B 5-1, then we beat Venezuela 5-2, beat Peru 5-0 before lastly beating Argentina 3-1. That then took us to the quarterfinals where we smashed Paraguay 4-0 and as you can see Neymar scored the opening goal before Arthur doubling the lead. They then scored an own goal, I believe that was their goalkeeper scoring the own goal before Gabriel Jesus scoring in the 94th minute. As you can see we had 19 shots on goal, 8 on target and XG of 2.15 and the possession ratio we had 62% of the ball whilst they only had 38%. So that then of course took us to the semi-finals where we then played Argentina again and that is where we beat them 2-1 in extra time. We had 15 shots compared to their 12, we had 7 on target compared to their 3, we had an XG of 2.80 and more of the ball with 52%. Neymar opened up the scoring with Sergio Aguero shortly equalising it in the 23rd minute and then Neymar scored a penalty in the 96th minute after we had Casemiro sent off. So of course that then took us to the final where we then played Colombia and we easily beat Colombia in the final as well beating them 3-0. We had 15 shots on goal, they had 11, we had 5 on target, they actually had 6, we had an XG of 1.69 and had more of the ball with 55%. Gabriel Jesus scored in the 30th minute before Fernandinho doubling the lead in 34th minute and Neymar completed the scoring on the 73rd minute. So with the Copa America actually finished you can see that my squad is very short but you can see here Neymar played 10 games scored 13 goals 
Roberto Firmino played 9 scoring 4, Fabinho playing 10 scoring 3 getting 2 assists, I just can't get my head over Neymar's average rating. In the Copa America he had an average rating of 8.41 I believe it was but overall in all competitions you can see Neymar's average rating on 8.12 so it's clear Neymar was key to any success that Brazil had using this tactic. But unfortunately, that there wraps up this tactical analysis. The tactical analysis was actually written by Total Football Analysis. I also covered Brazil already as well, especially against Venezuela, which you can find on their YouTube channel. I may post the link in my description below. If you are new or you haven't yet, make sure you are subscribed. I'm on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Make sure you like this video. Also, you can share it. That would help a lot. But I will see you guys soon or speak to you guys soon, sorry. Stay safe. Peace out.